This is Ben Spencer, medical correspondent of the Daily Mail, and I'll be answering your questions on coronavirus. First question is from Eleanor, who writes, This query relates to my husband, who is 73 and fit and well. On 25th of February, he was most unwell. He had been in bed for over a day, unable to eat, move, with severe muscle pains. The bed was soaked with sweat and sheets had to be changed several times a day. He also had what seemed to be a urinary tract infection, but no breathing problems. He has always had a bit of a cough. I phoned 111 and a doctor and a nurse came out for half an hour. He was given antibiotics and gradually improved, but there was no explanation for the severe symptoms of a fever. However, his symptoms were similar to some coronavirus cases reported recently. Now there has been mentioned that the virus could have been around earlier, do you think he could have had it? Well, many people are now looking back at bouts of illness they've had over the last few months and thinking to themselves, was it coronavirus? It's very, very hard to tell, especially if there's no retrospective testing, at least at the moment. In the next few months, the government's hoping to bring in antibody testing, which will tell if someone's had the coronavirus in the past. That's going to be a huge benefit to everyone. But at the moment, I have to say this doesn't sound like a case of coronavirus. Nearly everyone who suffers symptoms with coronavirus suffers breathing problems. That's because the virus itself first nestles itself deep in the lungs. So nearly everyone has a hacking cough and a fever. If your husband has symptoms of a urinary tract infection and the doctor and nurse who came obviously thought he did because they gave him antibiotics, it's likely that it was an infection rather than coronavirus. An infection like a UTI often does cause a fever, so that would explain that. Georgia writes, are we allowed to go for a three hour walk directly from our home or is there a time limit on daily exercise? The government has set out exceptions to what it says is the basic rule that everyone should stay at home. Now, one of these exceptions is going out once a day to exercise with people you live with or by yourself. It's up to all of us to interpret those rules. And we must not look just at the rules themselves, i.e. you're allowed to go out once a day for exercise, but also the spirit of the rules. And the spirit of the rules is to keep as many of us as possible at home. The government accepts that that's not practical and that we need to get out a little bit at least to exercise. And that's why it's said you can go out once a day to exercise. So it's up to you to really interpret these rules. Think to yourself what's necessary for you. If you think a three hour walk for you is really, really important, then yes, perhaps you should do that. But if you think maybe an hour walk is sufficient to keep you happy and healthy, then maybe that would be best. Pete writes, how fatal is coronavirus compared to the flu? Now this is a really interesting question because coronavirus has been compared to the flu throughout this epidemic. On the whole, in most years, the flu kills about 0.1% of people it infects. So that's about one in every thousand. Now, at the moment, we think coronavirus kills about 0.6% of people. So that means it's about six times as fatal. However, it's not just about how lethal it is if you catch it. It's about how many people are catching it. Now, every year in Britain, 8,000 people die from the flu. In some years, it's worse. Some years in bad winters, is up to 13,000 or more. Now, at the moment, it looks like we're going to surpass that. So at the moment, there have been nearly 3,000 deaths in the UK. And by the end of this crisis, that's almost certainly going to have surpassed the 8,000. Possibly up to 20,000, they say, would be a good result. So it's not just how many people die if they catch it but how many people catch it in the first place? So that goes to how transmissible it is. Now with flu, every person 
in fact about another 1.2 to 1.5 people on average. With coronavirus, most people will infect another three people. The government has tried to reduce that number of three people transmitted per case by putting in social distancing. And this is why social distancing is so important. If you can get that three transmissions down to one transmission, it means that every case is only passed on to one more person. And once that happens, the virus and the epidemic will stay at the same size because every case is only replaced by one other. If you can get that one down to lower than one, then the, then the epidemic starts shrinking in size. And that's when we will have beaten this epidemic. The next question is from Janie, who writes, will death rates for other illnesses go up because doctors are too busy with coronavirus? Sadly, yes. The government itself has admitted this in its modeling. Chief Medical Officer Chris Whitty said right from the start that there are three ways people die during this coronavirus outbreak. The first way is if someone gets coronavirus and then dies from it. That's a direct death. The second is if someone is ill for another reason, goes to hospital and the hospital is overwhelmed because of coronavirus and they die because they don't get the treatment they need. And the third way, which is possibly the saddest, is people dying because of the social isolation and the social distancing measures the government has put in place. And there we're talking about people not getting the care they need, perhaps people in isolation falling over and hurting themselves. So yes, death rates for other illness will sadly almost certainly go up because doctors are too busy with coronavirus. We're seeing already that Urgent operations are being cancelled, even cancer treatments being cancelled in hospitals as doctors try and really focus on coronavirus. And this is one of the very, very sad things about this epidemic. 